joined by Senator Tom Cotton. Good morning, sir. How are you doing today? Morning, Kevin. Good to be on with you as always. Thank you for being here. All right. It was during a Senate Armed Services Committee meeting. Uh, you were questioning the commander of the United States Pacific Command, Admiral Harry Harris, about the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty. What happened here? <laughs> well, Kevin, let, let me give your listeners a little Cold War background. Um, so the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty prohibits cruise missiles. Um of a range of about 300 miles to, to 3,000 miles mm. uh, that are land-based. That goes back to the late Cold War. Soviet Union deployed them in Eastern Europe in the late 1970s. Uh, the United States and NATO deployed them uh, to counteract that threat in 1983. For those of you who were alive back then, you remember the vast protests across the United States and Europe when we did that deployment, much of which we now know was funded by Russian intelligence. The reason those missiles were so stabilizing in Europe at the time is there's such short flash to bang, as we say in the military. An intercontinental missile may take 20 or 30 minutes from the time it's launched and detected to the time it impacts. A cruise missile based in, say, France or Germany could strike Soviet territory in a matter of um, minutes. Uh, likewise, a cruise missile based uh, in the Western Soviet Union or in Eastern Europe could strike France two or three minutes. So the United States and the Soviet Union reached the uh, Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty in the late Reagan years to totally ban those kind of weapons. Um, you know, neither the United States nor Russia would, I'm sorry, the United States or the Soviet Union would possess them or manufacture them. Uh, that was a far-reaching agreement, and it was a uh, very good agreement for the United States. Why? Because that's not a threat we face. You know, we don't face threats from cruise missiles from Canada or Mexico. The Soviet Union did. Uh, so we were giving up very little, and we were getting a lot in return. Unfortunately, Russia is now violating that treaty. They have been for many years. And no other country in the world uh, adheres to that treaty. They're not signatories. So China, for instance, builds thousands of missiles, and over 90% of them, as Admiral Harris said, is within that intermediate range, 300 to 3,000 miles. Uh, that means that our forces and our allies in East Asia are held at risk by these Chinese missiles. Meanwhile, we don't even get the benefit of the INF Treaty because Russia is violating it. So something has to stop. We either have to bring Russia back into compliance with it or we have to uh, withdraw from the treaty itself uh, and to protect our own interest against China. Uh, Senators, I understand I read a story this morning that says that China is upset about the U.S. putting a missile defense shield in South Korea. Is that also a concern? China is almost always upset when the United States does anything. So we can't let Beijing dictate our defense policy or our, ad, or our allies' defense policies. So we've deployed what's called the, the THAAD missile defense system. THAAD stands for Terminal High Altitude Air Defense. So if you imagine when a, a ballistic missile goes up and it reaches its, reaches its apex, uh, and then it starts to fall, uh, just like a basketball shot does, for instance. So that, that defense system will strike North Korean missiles when they are aimed at South Korea or at Japan. Uh, this is a defensive system. China has no reason uh, to be worried about the United States deploying a uh, medium-range defensive missile system to South Korea to protect against the North Korean system. However, if Beijing does not like the fact that we are taking these actions, that is all the more reason for them to exert their vast influence on North Korea to get North Korea to denuclearize. If North Korea didn't have all these missiles with nuclear warheads on them, then we wouldn't have to take the steps of deploying the THAAD missile defense system to South Korea. Uh, the president uh, yesterday saying he'd be honored to meet with the North Korean president. Uh, he also in recent days called him a smart cookie. Is that a good policy? Not exactly the way I would put it, Kevin. Um, ultimately, we may reach the point uh, where it's in our interest to negotiate uh, with North Korea. As you've heard administration officials say, we're not trying to bring Kim Jong-un to his knees. We're trying to bring him to his senses. Uh, and if, if it reaches the point where they have halted all missile testing, where they have halted nuclear tests, they have opened their uh, nuclear sites to inspection, to have a direct one-on-one -on -one negotiation may ultimately be in our interest of achieving a denuclearized North Korea. Uh, but until then, um, starting talks with Kim Jong-un, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or the so-called six-party talks that uh, the Bush administration engaged in, is likely to come a cropper, as every other effort in the last 25 years to make concessions that the Kim regime has done. Senator Tom Cotton, I'm going to touch on this, too. The House may take up health care again. Uh, do you still hold the same position as before? Uh, we need to talk about this, take time to get it right, or do you feel that this is going to be a better version of what was offered before, and will it even pass if it gets to the Senate? So 
in early March, I was saying that I thought the House was moving too fast. Uh, we're now in early May, so that's a good thing that you know it's now taking two months of deliberation and careful consideration. I haven't reviewed the bill with the major amendment uh, proposed last week in detail. Uh, from what I hear from my friends in the House, I think it's moving in the right direction. I am, however, also working in a small group of senators from kind of a, across the Republican spectrum of ideas uh, from the more centrist to the more conservative members um, on trying to hash out a solution based on the general outlines of the House bill that we think could get uh, at least 52 Republican votes in the Senate. Um, so that's really where my effort has been. That's been a, uh, um, a private effort kind of behind the scenes for the last month or so since the first House bill was pulled from the floor. Um, and that's what we're going to continue to do, uh, whatever happens with the House bill. Senator Tom Cotton, thank you for your time. Thank you, Kevin. Have a good day. 747 News.